Okay, Justin, now that we've got that supply and we know that that usable forage that we're going to utilize of a thousand pounds is going to also maintain uh, that healthy plant vigor and uh, also maintain that good quail habitat, how do we uh, figure out the demand side of this for uh, livestock? When we talk about demand, we need to we need to know actually how much of that that forage that is required by by a, a livestock unit to uh, or an animal unit uh, to meet their requirements for for a year. And typically, we don't set stocking rates for a month or two weeks. We set them for a year, so we have an annual stocking rate, and, and typically that's expressed as as acres per animal unit. When we talk about animal units. That's, that's generally one 1,000 pound cow and her calf up to six months of age. So, the, so that's just a standard, um, it's a standard unit that we tend to use when we're setting stocking rates. That way, if you have 1,300 pound cows, you can adjust based on that. So we use a 1,000 pound cow as the, as the, the, uh, the animal unit equivalent. Okay, so when we start talking about demand, it's a pretty simple calculation. It's a 1,000 pound cow times 3% of her body weight times 365 days. So if you make that calculation, it comes up to 10,950 pounds of, of forage that she needs every year, rain or shine, to go in to, to meet her requirements. Okay, So that's 10,950. So we know our supply now, and we also know our demand. Okay, so... To set a stocking rate, those are the only real two things you need to know to set an initial stocking rate. So you take the demand, 10,950, and you divide that by 1,000 pounds of usable forage, and that'll give us our initial stocking rate of one animal unit to about 11 acres, 10.9, right at 11 acres uh, per animal unit. That's our initial stocking rate. Now, we're not done there. Um, that would be if if the, the, the forage were similar from fence to fence. Now, how many ranches in Texas grow the same amount of forage from fence to fence? And it doesn't really exist too not, much not, 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 not in a native situation. That's, that's very true. So one of the biggest misconceptions or, or, or mistakes made when setting stocking rates is stopping right there. Is That's my initial stocking rate, a cattle 11 acres, and, and we're going to open the gates. Well not compensating for those acres that aren't producing that that same level of production is is that is what that mistake is it's called not compensating for grazable acres as we look across the, the, the pasture back here we have a lot of these these live oak mots that aren't producing those kinds and amounts of forage we we talk about um, those those brushy areas uh, really steep areas cattle are, are pretty uh, uh, I don't want to say lazy but they, they like to, to eat on flat, rather uh, flat slopes. So they're not going to climb those 30, 40, 50% slopes and eat up there if they don't have to. So water is also another, another thing. A lot of us have lakes or lot, very large ponds that take up a considerable acreage in a pasture. We need to take those acres out. They, they don't, they don't uh, throw grass either, if you will. So if we take that stocking rate of 11 acres per animal unit, and let's say we made an estimation that 30% of this pasture or this ranch is non-grazable and 70% is graz grazable, we would take our 11 acres per animal unit, divide that by 0.7 or 70% um, grazable, and that comes up to a stocking rate of a little over 15 acres per animal unit. And that's what we would call a corrected stocking rate, and that's what I would start with. And again, it's a plan, it's an estimate, it's always an estimate. The, be the best thing to do is, is set that stocking rate and then be out in the pasture monitoring your forage conditions over the year and, be and, and build in some flexibility. Okay, so uh, different landowners have different objectives and different goals. And so is it always good to uh, set that can capacity at that corrected stocking rate or should we, should we vary a little bit? You always, you always want to go back to whatever the goal and objective is for the landowner. So um, even, even, if, even if they're only interested in livestock production, I would set the stocking rate at, at a conservative rate, or at least I would recommend that. And, and the reason I do that is most of the time we're in a drought in Texas, the, the majority of it. We'll have wet years, we'll have dry years. If you're stocked at a conservative rate, let's just say 80 to 75 to 80% of what that carrying capacity is, 
then you've automatically built in some flexibility. So in those in those dry years, you may not have to cull into your breeding herd because you've built in some some buffer. In wet years, and where you've got above normal production, you could come in with stalkers or yearlings and and make up that difference. Or if you're a wildlife minded producer, you could leave that buffer alone and help help build more habitat and more forage and more nesting habitat for quail.